Hi, my name is Justin Schauff, I'm the founder and run our engineering team here at PatchMyPC. Today, I'm excited to announce the first public preview of a new feature that allows you to perform base installations of products within our software update catalog. So let's go ahead and jump right in. I'll show you exactly how this feature works and what's available today. So the first thing you want to do if you want to try out the beta within the about tab of our publishing service, you can come in here and choose to install preview builds. This will be available in the 1.251 build. So anything above that will have this capability. Now what you'd be accustomed to is within our updates, you're able to come in here and choose what products that you want to choose to publish as a software update. And you can of course do things like custom actions, like running pre or post scripts, deleting shortcuts, disabling updates, all the actions that you would be accustomed to if you've been using our service. Now in this build, there's going to be a new tab here called package rules. This is going to be where we come and configure what products that you want to make available and create installation packages for. Now, the first thing that we would do is come in here and choose to uh, enable the feature. Now, before we can actually start publishing, we do need to provide some details for us to understand how we create the packages. Now, the first thing that we need to do is provide the server that is running the SMS provider. So this is generally going to be installed on your primary site server within SCCM. So we'll just go ahead and paste in that host name. Next, we're going to have to define the source folder that all of the content is going to be downloaded to when we create these install packages. So what I've done is I've pre-created a UNC path that is just sources backslash applications. So this is going to be the root level where I want all my packages to be created. So I'll go ahead and paste that in here. Now within that, we're going to create a vendor folder, a product subfolder, and then a unique ID for each actual uh, package that we create. Okay. Now the next option here is you can choose whether you want to automatically distribute the content for any newly created packages to all your distribution points. So you don't have to worry about manually doing that after the package is created. So that's option is enabled by default. Next, what we can do is choose how you want to handle the updating of products that have previously been published as an install package when there's a new update available. So for example, let's say that Chrome 72 was published and created as a base install package. What would you want to happen when version 73 becomes available? By default, we're going to automatically update that package point it to the new source files, and then update the distribution points so that any future client installation would always have that latest version. Now you can also choose to update the package source file, but not update the DPs if you want more manual control over that. Or you could choose to just create a new package for that new version 73 of Chrome and leave the previous one untouched. Generally speaking, you're probably gonna to wanna to leave that default option to automatically update the package and the distribution points so that you can ensure that you're always getting that latest install during the initial installation of these packages. Next, by default, we're gonna to connect to the SMS provider using the computer account of the server that the publishing service is configured on. Now, if that's remote from your site server, you may wanna choose a connection account where you can provide a domain user that has permissions to create packages with an SCCM rather than assigning the computer account that permission. If you wanted to do that, you could choose this checkbox and give it a service account to use. In our case, we should be fine since we're running on the site server. We don't even have to worry about changing any permissions here. We should have access. And then the next option, we just want you to know that this is gonna perform base installs within the command lines. It may accept ULAs for products. So just to be aware that you've reviewed and you understand that these third-party products also have ULAs and you'll be accepting those as well when the silent command line is performed on some of these products. Now, one option that we can do here is within the package rules, we can automatically copy any enabled products within the update rules that also support base installs. So if I go ahead and click this duplicate tab, we can also choose whether you want to also copy any custom right click actions that you applied to those update products. So for example, things like pre and post scripts, disabling updates and removing desktop shortcuts. So we can also go ahead and include those. And we can see here that uh, Chrome, 7-Zip, and Java were all copied from the update rules into the base install packages to be created. Now, if we right-click Chrome, we can also see that all of those custom actions that were applied within the updates tab 
has also been applied within our packages. Now, in this build, we also added a new option where you can modify the command line of any product this can be especially helpful if you're doing a base install package and you may be using a licensed product where you need to put in your own product key using a command line within the installer. So you can now use this option as well. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and apply these settings and I'm going to go ahead and run our synchronization. So that's gonna get these packages created in the background. So we'll just give this a minute to run, but what we should see is that within the package source folder, we're gonna start getting the different vendors and the product names starting to download and create here. So I'll pause it while that completes. Okay, so that completed. Now, if we look at our notifications tab, we can see that we do have email notifications enabled. So when you're publishing and creating new packages, just like your software updates, you'll also get an email and we can see any new package that's been created for base installs will also be listed here. So this looks good. It looks like we have those all created. Now, if we come back to the source content, we can see that we have the vendor name, the product name, and then we have a unique ID for each actual version of the product that gets published. So here's where we can actually see the binaries that were downloaded. So here's the Chrome uh, MSI file. We have an XML that contains some of the install logic and any custom actions. We also have that post action PowerShell script that we defined. This one is setting the home page for Chrome as well as a few different policies using registry values as a custom action. Now, if we come back into the SCCM console and I click on my packages and go ahead and refresh, we can see that we automatically created the packages that you can use for deploying via a task sequence or a collection deployment. Now, I do wanna address the question of why did we use the package model instead of the app model? This is a great question. I wanna dive into why we chose this method initially. Now, the way that applications work is you get a lot of additional settings like installable logic, installed logic, supersedence, retirement, and there's a lot more complexity with that. Now, the reason that we chose packages is we could use the same exact schema that we use for our software update catalog to create packages. Now, if we wanted to use the application model, we would have to create our own bridge to convert the detection logic of our updates into the application model. So we chose to use packages because the initial development time would be much quicker than trying to create a, a bridge to convert the schema for our updates to the app model. Now, with software updates, it's got a lot of the capabilities that you would get with an application. So the way that we're envisioning this is the initial installation would be done using our package, and we would have keys of course, keep those base packages up to date whenever a new version comes out. And then going forward, you would use your software updates, which contain a lot of those things that applications would have. So things like your install logic, your installed logic, supersedence, uh, retiring or declining of updates. A lot of the same capabilities, once you use the base package, will then be configured as you're publishing software updates through our product so that you can maintain them more like an application. Now, in the future, we certainly probably will look into having an application creation rather than packages. We just wanted to get this to you quicker because it's the most requested feature and it will certainly still save you a lot of time versus uh, manually packaging these up. Okay, now uh, one thing I do wanna cover here is that these are actually outdated versions. So just to simulate, to show you guys what it's gonna look like when a new version comes out, choosing the option to update existing packages, we'll run that now. So on the back end, we went ahead and updated the catalog that we're pointing to. So I'm gonna run another synchronization of our catalog and we'll pause this to wait and see what happens when a new version of 7-Zip and Chrome comes out. So the latest 7-Zip is going to be version 19 and the latest version of Chrome is version 73. Okay, so that synchronization just completed. So within our email notifications, in addition to getting the email about any new third-party software updates that may have been published within a sync, we can also see that we get notified that we've updated a package from an old version to a new version, and then we list the new version that came out for that installation package. So if we come back into our console now, and if we run a quick refresh here, we can see that we automatically updated that existing package and we also automatically updated the content on your distribution points for these packages. So just to show you an example of what the installation is gonna look like, I'm gonna go ahead and do a collection deployment just to test this out. Now you could of course use these within task sequences if you wanted to install them during imaging. So I'm gonna go ahead and deploy all three of these and we'll pause it while that completes. 
Okay, so our deployments have been created. So I'm gonna go ahead and jump over to one of our client devices that is part of that collection. So if we look here, we can see that we currently don't have Chrome installed. So this is an available deployment that I could launch through Software Center. So I'm gonna go ahead and click that and start the installation of Chrome. Okay, so we're now installing this. So in addition to all the log files within SCCM, so for example, for packages, we could look at the uh, execute manager log and we could see all the install commands happening. Now with, uh, with our solution, we do also create a patch my PC dash script runner log within the CCM logs. This of course uses the format that CM trace uses and we can see a lot more details about what's actually happening. So for example, we can see things like the actual vendor installer. So here's the Chrome MSI. We can see any type of arguments, any custom actions like our PowerShell script, any registry values that we're gonna be setting to disable updates. And we can just see all this stuff happening. So for example, here's uh, the desktop shortcut getting deleted. Here's where we set the different policies for the update values. And here's where we can see the exit code of the post action that we applied here. Now, if we come back in, we can go ahead and open up Chrome and we can validate from that initial installation, we went ahead and ran that post action PowerShell script that set the home page for all users, as well as different values to disable self updates. So any of those custom actions that you're applying through updates will also apply during the base installation packages that we're using. Now within our right click options for Chrome, we did also enable a few other things. So for example, we enabled logging for the vendor's installer, disabled updates, deleted shortcuts, as well as our uh, custom script. So since we enabled vendor logging, we also created this patch my PC install logs, and then we put the verbose install log of the actual installer in case something were to happen, you could actually get more than just the exit code. You could actually look at the vendor's verbose logging of the installer to see what happened. So all of those features that you would be accustomed to for our updates apply the exact same way for base installs. So let's go ahead and kick off Java here. So let's do a refresh while we're waiting. We can see that we now have the latest Chrome installed. And then looking at Java, what we can see is that uh, within Java on our right click actions here, we also disabled self updates. So let's come back to our client and wait for this install to complete and then we'll look at what that looks like. So this installation should be completing any second now. Now, one thing that we'll notice is near the end of the core installation, we can see the scheduled updater just got created in our startup tab. But then what we'll notice here is that stuff is gonna be automatically deleted for self update. So let's take a quick look here. And we can see that we automatically set the enable Java updates to zero using that feature to turn off updates. And now if we come back to Atom Root Programs, do a quick refresh, we can now see that we have that installed using the base install. And that's really all there is to getting this set up. Now, um, this will probably be released for a stable build. We're, we're hoping for the middle to end of April. So uh, one thing to note is that if you try to enable this in the preview mode, you may get notified that you're not on the Enterprise Plus subscription. So in order to use the base installation feature for packages, we are gonna have a new subscription level called Enterprise Plus that's gonna be $3 per client a year. So currently the Enterprise would be $2 per client. If you wanna add the base install feature, that will be a new level. So if you get an option saying you're not enabled for that, we can certainly enable that for the preview build if you wanna just test things out, make sure that's working and help us test that, we'll be able to enable that during the preview period for no extra cost. But once this becomes a production release, we are gonna have that as a new uh, subscription level called Enterprise Plus that's $3 per client a year. I hope this video was helpful and thank you for watching.